July 18, 1944. The Red Army has vastly overwhelmed the German defenses on the Eastern Front and is advancing at full speed towards the Baltics and Poland. On the Western Front, things are not going much better and the Allies are just days away from breaking through the Normandy Front and retaking all of France. If the German leader had any hope of holding out in territory he controlled indefinitely, it has now become clear that his enemies will soon be on Germany's original border. Faced with this situation of total collapse, the Germans applied a series of desperate measures to avoid the defeat they were facing. It was exactly on these dates that vacations were abolished, the working day was increased to about 60 hours a week, rationing was increased, and a little later in October, militias such as the Volkstrom were created. In any case, what happened on that July 18, 1944? This was the date on which Hitler published his Decree No. 58, with the title of Preparations for the Defense of the Reich. In this decree, a series of guidelines are given that must be adopted immediately, to face the combats that are going to take place on the German borders in the future. To give a few examples, the training of the civilian population is ordered, the construction of trenches and all kinds of defenses, it is established who will assume command in the threatened territories and many more issues. At the same time that this was taking place, a modification was carried out in the new German divisions that were being formed, with which it was intended to stop the Allied advance. These were called blocking divisions, since they tried to block Allied penetrations, although they ended up adopting the name of Volksgrenadier divisions. These new formations combined the names Volks, referring to the village, to inspire a sense of nationalism and fighting spirit, and Grenadier, to invoke the traditions of the German army. These units, which as we will see below were not so new, arose from the need to have combat divisions at the front, given the great loss they just suffered on the Eastern Front after Operation Bagration. Due to the shortage of troops and material that the Germans have, these new divisions are going to be smaller than the normal infantry divisions that existed up to this date. To give us an idea, its composition was made up of three regiments with two battalions each. This is equivalent to just over half a German infantry division, or what is the same, a reinforced brigade. In any case, all these data are very misleading because due to the precariousness of the moment, most of the divisions did not have the number of troops that they were supposed to have. This means that if this new Volkgrenadier division reached its maximum strength, it could be at the same level as any other division, which had between 8,000 and 12,000 troops. Thus, they were designed to economize on manpower and focus primarily on defense. To compensate for the reduced number of troops it had, the Volksgrenadier units were equipped with a higher proportion of automatic weapons to create a greater volume of firepower, and to be able to fulfill their role effectively. Fortunately for the Germans, their technology had come a long way from 1939, and it was now possible to get the same firepower with fewer troops. This was primarily due to the STG-44 assault rifle, which was used to arm two of the platoons in each company, giving them devastating firepower at close range. Secondly, all these divisions were provided with a large number of anti-tank weapons, these being the famous Panzerfaust, which proved very effective against Allied tanks. Thus, it was no longer necessary to transport heavy anti-tank guns, nor to have its own tanks, since a unit of this type was capable of acting autonomously. Even so, they were also endowed with anti-tank companies, combat engineers, flak anti-aircraft, and each battalion received six artillery guns. Obviously we have to say that this was in theory, since later some were equipped only with the material that was available. On the other hand, the MG-42 machine gun, which was also issued in large numbers, was a very effective weapon to give these smaller units great firepower. Given the material they received as well as their composition, let's see the characteristics of the soldiers who made up these last divisions of the Wehrmacht. Volksgrenadier divisions were organized around a corps of veterans of destroyed divisions in the east or west, and were supplemented by new recruits or excess personnel from the Luftwaffe and Navy. To explain it better, let's see the following example. During the Soviet summer offensive of 1944, the German 212th Infantry Division was virtually destroyed in Lithuania in August of the same year. 
Next, using the unit survivors as a central pillar, the division was rebuilt and became the 212 Volksgrenadier Division in September. To complete the unit that finally reached 10,500 troops, a merger was made with other smaller units that had also been torn to pieces, and with new young recruits who had to be trained. Because the unit already had veteran soldiers, they themselves were in charge of instructing the newly arrived boys who were barely 17 years old. With this, it was possible to save a lot of time, and it was much more effective than having to create a new division from scratch. In any case, the combination of recruits from each unit, the size of the number of veterans that formed the base of the unit, and the time it took to form each of these divisions, made their combat performance better or worse. On the other hand, and as we have seen with this example, their names are in most cases the same as the infantry division from which the Volksgrenadier division has been rebuilt. So exactly the same thing happens with the 9th, 16th, 19th or any of the almost 85 divisions of this type that were formed. They all take the name of the infantry division from which the Corps of Veteran Soldiers come. Having seen all this, let's move on to assess its effectiveness in combat. This analysis is quite complicated because these units had a great lack of training, mobility, morale, little or no support from aviation and combat tanks. Thus, their enemies did have all these elements, and this made the combats very unequal on many occasions. However, there were divisions that, despite all these difficulties, were able to make themselves felt on the battlefield, and were the key piece in the last defensives of the Wehrmacht, as well as in the defense of Germany. To give an example, half of the divisions that participated in the Ardennes Offensive were Volksgrenadier divisions. Finally, let's see some of these divisions that were most relevant. First we have the 12th Volksgrenadier Division, which fought on the Western Front. Several American generals said of it that it was the most powerful German fighting force they encountered during those months. This division fought in Hurtgen Forest, where the Americans suffered almost 50,000 casualties. He also participated in the Ardennes Offensive, being considered the best infantry unit of the 6th German Panzer Army during said operation. Later, he went on to occupy defensive positions on the Rhine. Another division that stood out precisely in the Hurtgen Forest was the 246, which in addition to participating in said forest, also did so in the defense of Aachen. And finally, another division that did well in combat was the 272nd. This unit was formed in September 1944 from the remnants of what was left of the German 272nd Infantry Division, which had been nearly wiped out in the final fighting of the Battle of Normandy. After six weeks of formation and training, she could be sent to the Western Front to participate in the defense of the Hurtgen Forest in which she caused many casualties to the Americans. In a subsequent action, she was able to encircle an American battalion and capture more than 300 men. After months of heavy fighting on the Rhine, they were finally surrounded in the Ruhr pocket along with a large number of other Volksgrenadier divisions. And it is that we have to remember, that the lack of fuel, and motorized means of transport were the Achilles heel of these units, and due to their low mobility, they had a much lower combat value than they could have had in other more favorable circumstances. In summary, it cannot be denied that the Volksgrenadier divisions played a vital role in the defense of Germany during late 1944 and 1945, being one of the main protagonists of the last seven months of the war. Although in this program we have talked about these divisions, do you want to know now which were the last ones that were created from the Waffen-SS, and what conditions they had? I leave you the link of said video together with the one of the Battle of Hurtgen that we have mentioned so much in this program in the description. And so far this program for today, which I hope you have found interesting, and has helped you to get an idea of the measures that were applied during these last months. Thank you all for being part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.